Hello everyone. As you see, here's the breakdown for what we'll be doing for the next two weeks. That is looking at what a causal assignment is and then evaluating essays. Uh, what works and what doesn't. So, causal analysis is how is is basically how to make someone care about why something happened. It's not just proving that it did, it's, it's an argument showing or convincing someone about cause and effect. So, your learning objectives for, for this uh, section are that we're gonna be defining cause and effect, which you probably know already from uh, having watched uh, any sort of pre-K television show as a kid. For me, it was Sesame Street. Cause and effect is something we really emphasize with little ones because we're trying to teach them responsibility, awareness, um, and just, just basic know-how to get through life. You have to understand cause and effect. But just because you learned it as a kid doesn't mean you can actually articulate it now as an adult. At least that's what I found for myself. So we're going to define it. We're going to look at strategies for developing an effective essay. But what I think is even most more important is we're going to be looking at essays, seeing what worked, and then what didn't and why. Because when you get down to those concrete examples, it's is is more illuminating for your own writing so first of all cause and effect is is a relationship between two elements pretty pretty basic and when you're discussing the um, condition that produced something you're looking at cause when you're discussing the result produced by something you're looking at effect so Again, very basic, except articulating that, it can be more difficult, sometimes because it is such commonplace knowledge. So remember, conditions producing is cause, and then the, uh, the results produced by something is the effect. So, um, to express it most simply, cause asks, why did X happen? or why does X happen, or why will X happen? So notice that the difference between all of these is time. Something that happened in the past, something that is currently happening, something that's going to happen in the future. And effect, why, what did Y produce in the past? What does Y produce currently? What will Y produce in the future? So, let me on from there. What are these sort of steps to working through this argument? Like your past arguments, it's pre-writing, drafting, revising, and then editing or proofreading. So with our pre-writing, we'll be coming up with purpose. And with purpose, we're going to tie in argument. That is, why is this meaningful? Why does this need to be explained or written down? So when we're doing cause and effect with little kids on things like Sesame Street that I grew up with, and for you, you'll have to Google what that means because it's way past your generation. But for their purpose is to make kids aware of the world. We're not working with that audience right now. When you're working with adults, cause and effect has to be more argumentative because you're assuming we already know how the world works, unless it's something that people are unaware of or people commonly mistake. Then your argument would be, hey, you, you thought this had no effect, but in fact, it produced X, Y, or Z. So for drafting, you are going to be thinking about a thesis that is reasonable, that is that's limited and, and can be proved with evidence. You're gonna be thinking about important sources and then finally, organization. Because with that causal cause and effect sort of flow, organizing not just the different major points, but the argument within each paragraph, the flow of information from cause to effect is, is really critical here. When you get to revising and then editing and proofreading next week, we'll be looking at 
How do you check your facts? How do you um, uh, consider whether or not enough evidence has been used or, or what evidence would be most effective in what way? So that is the overall flow of what we're going to be doing. Now, let's think about thesis. So as we were um, in, in a cause and effect, a causal argument is going to emphasize cause. And usually that means multiple causes that produce a single effect. Like all the different uh, reasons a car wreck happens. Now it may seem very simple. Person, you know, sped through a green light, sped through a red light, excuse me, and T-boned my car. That's not an argument. I mean, that's, that's a statement about something that happened. But to make it an argument, you might look at what are all the determining factors here? Well, uh, one of the determining factors is that the person was texting. Or one of the determining factors is that they uh, are a parent and were looking in the back seat. And the reason they're looking in the back seat is because a bee got in the car. And the reason that matters is their child has uh, a death, uh, a life threatening allergy to bees. Well, that is meaningful, but then how do you make it into an argument? We're going to get to that in a minute. Now, emphasizing effect, what could be looking at a single cause, and then the argument is all of the things that that produced. And then the, the meaningfulness or the, the way we turn these, these truths into an argument is to prove something about it such as if you were proving that um, although having the windows down might feel really good, it's, it's dangerous in all of these situations because of the airflow and things able to move in and out of the car, and, and then proving um, the danger of riding with your windows down, something that's surprising, something we didn't think of, or, or with effect, you might be arguing that insurance really doesn't fully cover the cost that the victim uh, experiences. And so because of that, in order to own a car and keep it running after a wreck, you, you need to have uh, more resources than insurance can supply and, and perhaps arguing whether or not that is um, equitable or, or um, manageable in our society. So that are ways you could possibly move from proving this to arguing through proving this. And then finally, there's also this chain cause and effect. Now your book emphasizes this more with history. And in a, a sort of history, uh, long distance view of the past, this sort of argument is easier to make. This chain that A cause B cause C causes a final effect. So, um, however, there are situations like it's showing here with a car wreck where you can get uh, multiple things. That bad weather then produce this, which produced this, which ended in doctor bills. So um, all of those are the kinds of theses that you can set up and the kinds of arguments that you can make with a cause and effect argument. So uh, next we're going to move on to what's effective and then analyzing that in actual essays.